what else we need. We need to protect the inputs and the outputs. So we use fuses. So and that's something probably we should have done earlier, but it's also good because I'm going to, to introduce some other tools here that you should use. Probably you, you may not have used them before. Like say you want now to drag this so that you can add some other component here. You can just hover here and hit G on your keyboard to drag. So we can have G here. Just when I hit G here and then move my keyboard, it just, just moves this to drag it. I can also hit G again on a wire and just move it more and more. And also the same for this. So I can put it where I want. So we can have a fuse here. Remember a fuse is given by F. If you do F, you should have some fuse or so just do fuse. So you can have one here. It's just, so you can pick any, like you can pick few small and say, okay. So to place it here. So this is another good tip that if you have a wire connected and you want just to insert a component there, you can just, instead of deleting, you just put it on top of that wire. It will automatically break the wire in the middle and connect it nicely inside there. So you just put it there and it does the connections here. So it's, it's fantastic here. Yeah, well, well you, have, you have that coming in. So, uh, so G to drag and just place it there. So we can also do the same for this, just to drag this G, move it here and drag this as well. So we are dragging everything here. We copy this. We also want to place it here so that it sits nicely, even with these wires and it will break them nicely and it sits there. So we do, we can also do protection of the outputs before we draw the 5V. So what we do, we can just do this. We can connect this one here. So you can have, let me move the lights just somewhere there. So we also need to have connectors for the output because we'll be drawing this uh, using it for some other use case. So what I'll do, I'll just hover here, press C to copy, move it here. The same here, I can just do C, copy and put it here. So we want to draw 5V output. So what we're going to do here, we can, we can connect this here. So before we get at the output here, what we do, we, 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 put a, we put a fuse here. Let me do this. I can grab this fuse at the output so that probably we want to protect and not draw more than this. So to rotate this, I want to mirror it uh, again along the Y axis. So I just hit Y on my keyboard. Yeah. Then so I can do the connections here. You wire here, W, hit Y, connect there. And again, this and this. So I'll do that, just come here, connect it here. So this way we have our output that is regulated here, but our LED is not getting, it's not passing through the fuse, but anyways, we don't need, this one cannot draw more than enough. So we're going to do the same for this, to rotate this or rather to make it face in the direction that you want. So what you're going to do here also, just hit Y here. So we just hover and hit Y. To move it, we just say M, hit hover and then move it place it there. So for wire, just do wire there and this connect. So left click, left click and left click. And we need to, to slot in a fuse here. So again, for those of us who had not seen this tip, how we do this, so you don't need to have like to delete this so that you can do it again. Just hover here, copy this, just place it, place it just on top of this wire. So it will nicely break, break those connections and, to, and it will create independent net names here. So just place it there, Poof. comes out very well. So remember that another thing that I would want to introduce at this point, remember that maybe you want your, your connections to have like some net names and so that you can know these connections when you go to the other side. So you can use this tool here, then place the net labels, click on this, just click on the signal that you want, like this one here, and then we can call this 5V out. Call it your preferred name. I can call it 5V out. Yeah, and then I can place it anywhere within this line. I can do the same for this. Now that I have the command selected, so I can just come here and just click here and write that. That is 3V3, then out. Yeah, so the other thing is that they say that we should have a switch. Now the, the problem is we didn't have like 
a clarification whether it's at the input or the output. So what we are going to do, we can add a switch at the input. Let's add one at the input. So again, I'll make use of more features here. I'll just come, come here, just hover, then hit G to drag. Drag this again, and drag this. So G for dragging, then hit A, and then we're going to search from keyguard switch. So then we can we can look for a switch that we need here. In a switch, we can use a switch or like a push button or stuff or something like that. So I have I have several libraries here because others have added manually. We'll be doing we'll be dealing with how to add this. But again, now here here is here is how we we can we can now search the switch say from Kika then just select you just hover here if you're not sure on the type you can just just go on exploring more and more to see the switches that they do have available for us here yeah you see they have we have several types maybe we would be looking for a switch like this just select this to place it here this looks a little bit bigger so what I do I just move this more G and drag I'll just drag this more. Just I'll copy this as I move and place it here. I'll do the same here, just move this G, such that now the, the power from the battery will not go into the, into the power regulator IC before the switch. So it has to go through the switch. So the logic is the switch first, when you switch on through the fuse, it gets some filtering here through the cups. And also like, supplies like enough power here then all the way through this and all the way to the output here so and i think with this like we have we have done all the requirements here for now so what we are going to do is the next step that is annotation now that we are happy with this so what we do is we go to this annotate so that we can give each and every component here a name so we do annotate just hit on annotate and then come here, annotate. Then we say annotation and you just click, you can click it twice and say oh, close. When you hear see annotation complete, just say close. And now you will note that every, every component here now, they do have like a name and st stuff like that. So after this, the next thing is to associate every, every symbol here with a footprint and a footprint is what you literally see on the keyboard. And of course, keep on saving your work you never know your your software might crash. You know it's free. Just save. So what you do, we go to this symbol here where they say assign PCB footprint to schematic symbols. This one here at the top. Just hit that. So what it does, it loads every other. It will open a window and then it will load every other component that you have. It will give you all the footprints that are available here. Then you can start selecting them here. So what we are going to do for this board, we are going to do THT components so that then in the, in the future we can do like a mix of SMT and THT. But, but we can do a mix, Let's, let us do a mix so that we can have a touch of all the components. So like C1, remember ceramic cups, we can go with the ceramic cups and remember the packages and stuff, but C1, you see C1 is polarized and Keycard will give you good suggestions here like here, so you see this one's a ceramic, like we can have, well, I know that we can have such package that is for 10 microfarads. If you want to see the, the footprint you are selecting, you see here, like a magnifying lens here, just click this, it will open another window, you can see this. So it will be looking something like this. Yet, this is not enough for you to know what, what looks like, just click on this, where we have 3D here. So if you hit this 3D, it will show you the 3D model itself and how it looks like. And now you can see what we are selecting is this. So you can be you can be clicking and checking so that you can see what package you are selecting and if that's what you really want to see. And this is when you are assigning footprints. So like I can select that here. For this one, let us select ceramic. And Kikad is very good at, at selecting for us here the types of packages that they are here because once we were here, it, it will give us like all the polarized cup cups. But for this case, now it's giving us some ceramic ones. And so let, let's go with, for this case, we're going to stick with 1246 and I'll be discussing about these packages and these numbers and what do they mean. 
but for now just know like the O2 one is smaller than O2 O4 and it's smaller than that one is smaller than O6 O3 so like the higher the number here is the smaller the package here because like 1206 if I click on 1206 you see the size there if I select O4 O2 you can see the size is much smaller here even you can see the size the 3D and if I do like 1206 or 1210 you see it's much bigger so it's much to do with the sizes and stuff so let's do 1206 for this particular design. So to, to select it and assign it here, you just double click once you select. Let's do the same for this. Let's do 1206. Yeah, and, and, and of course now say like all this, they are the same and I want to do it all together so that to avoid wasting time. So what you do, you just click on this, hit shift on your keyboard, and then up to here, select all the ones that you want. Then you come to this side. Then you just release your shift, come to this end, select if you need this package 1246, double click, and it will assign them all nicely there. So the same for the LEDs. So LEDs, like now say we want to do like, we'll do say LED that's THT. Go here, maybe the five millimeter one. So you can, you can see that's the footprint and that's how the LED looks like. So it will be looking like something like this. So what you do, you can just double click here to assign it. And the same for this, we want the same LED, so just double click there. So for the fuse, you see, it also gives us like suggestions. You know, KiCad is very good in giving you suggestions on what you want to use. Because like now it has, when we went to fuse, it's giving us some suggestions here and the 3D models that are available. If it's not available, it just gives you the footprint. So we can just play around with this and see whatever we want. And of course, at times, if they don't give us what we really need, so what we just do is we can select like any other package and, and say like some THT or SMT, and then we can do that later. So also the other thing is say like it's fuse, you can come onto this side. I've not talked about this side. So this side gives you a list of libraries that are available. And you can see like, for instance, if it's fuse, you can now filter using this. And you can hit say like fuse here. And so again, you see, we don't see anything here. It's because of this top here, these are filters. So don't worry if, if you're not like used to this, you can, you'll get back to this lecture when you get used to these commands. So you can just like start unchecking this and you'll see like stuff will start flowing in here. If I, unche I uncheck again and I uncheck. So it means that now we don't have anything selected in regards to fuses here. And that's why if I select something here, I can have like all the list of fuses that are available here. And you see, we have several, several types here. We have like the THT and SMT, but then we can, let's just select fuse here and then we can just do a filtering, yeah? And I want us to use SMT fuses. So we could go again with 1246. If I select here and select here. So this is the fuse that we will be having here. A fuse that I have, that I have added, maybe a footprint, say like 1806, I think. Yeah, this is I've added the 3D model here. This is like a fuse, an SMD fuse, looks like this. So we we could go with that for now. And then we have four of them. Just shift and shift on your keyboard. Then left click up to where you want. Now we're selecting more. We just want from here. Just select this, shift, and then there. Then double click. We'll go with the 1812. Here. Okay. So for these other connectors now, so what we'll be using here, let us use some terminal blocks. You see, and you'll see them what I mean here. So you can come again here on this side, select terminal blocks. For this case, let's use like this terminal blocks underscore Yukon. Most commonly we use this, and there are two pins. So if I select like this two pin. And I want you to see the exact footprint here. You can see it's this one and then the 3D symbol. This is the, of course, now you see this one looks familiar for you. And this is, this is the terminal blocks. So what we do, all of this, shift, left click to the point that you want. And then this, double click here. We can, we, we have actually attached them. So for the resistors again, so if I do this, you see we don't have like anything because we've selected here, terminal block. We can also select resistors here and it will give us a list of all available resistors. So this is THT or resistor, SMD. 
this is surface mount device we had smt surface mount technology so it's we are talking about the technology and the device itself so but for tht we just leave it as tht as always so smd you just come here and select now we can do we are using 1246 here so let's select one for 1246 the symbol looks like this and this is the footprint so double click so for the other one let us select tht so it will give you a range of them and how they are arranged and how they are laid like now see if we select something like axio looks like this this is how it will look like on the pcb so you want we want to go like have something cool here more maybe you can have it aligned say vertically let's see for radio what they are giving us here something like this this is something this is a different type of resistor also so say your application needed something like this you could select that so let me select one type of package here an axi one or maybe a radio one. It just depends with what we feel comfortable with so let's say like this one here and you see they do they do some classic connection here so we can go with something like this so i'll just double click on this so for the switches so what we are going to do we'll also come here and select switches on this other side so we'll have all the available switches for us here and we can we can also again go on like we'll go on clicking clicking on here to see like the available and how it looks like in 3d and see if that's what really if that's what we would really want for our case let's see if we have some other types of switches here but we have like button switches here also tht like we could use they also by their different type of it so again if you are really not sure on the type of like you want just always feel free to explore on all the other types of switches that are available here you see like for this case we could use like a deep switch that has like two is it something like this also you know these types of switches i think you've seen them like also we have like the say the vertical ones let me see like one we could have one here yeah you see like this one here you just toggle this on and off so we could also select such maybe if it's this way and then you can just toggle down and top so maybe you could select like this one i think it looks more cool let me select this yeah and also for the other one i select just select the same one so if you so that goes to at least number eight so we can select the same one. you realize that these two packages here they had footprints already so at times you might select like components that they are already associated and probably you might want to see you just click to see what what they have associated it with too once you click here go to your footprint package view it looks like this and maybe the 3d so that you can have and see how it looks like so once you have completed this association and you are happy you just say apply and save to schematic and continue then hit on ok so it just closes that window automatically and takes you back here so at this stage now we've completed the schematic itself and the association with all the footprint but we need to move now to the pcb so the next step that you do here is generating we generate the netlist here so what you do you can this one you see here generate netlist so that netlist gives the data of how the components have been associated and all the net net names and wherever and how they are linking up and how it was really associated on the footprint level so click on generate netlist here it should fire up this this small window here dialog box here say generate don't do anything here just say generate netlist you save this netlist where you want it to go ideally it will open the project file that has your keycard file in it so just say save hit save and once you do that you are ready now to go to pcb so what you do to go to pcb you can hit on this here or you can just go here and fire up it from here and of course just that we are at the schematic level here you can and we don't want probably wasting time and doing that we can just run pcb layout just double click on this it will automatically open this window so you should see such a window once you hit that so 
So for now, I'll do a recap. What we've done is that we created the schematic itself. We, have, we then went ahead now and associated every other symbol now with the footprints. When we were doing it here at the, at the footprint, at, assign every symbol with the footprints. We, we, we went throughout how you want to check and everything. Then once you are done with every association, that this one, you don't have anything here missing, just say apply, save and okay. So once we are through and you're happy with every association here, now you go to generating the net list. So like I've said, that net list carries data that has everything to do with the connections, the net names, and also how the footprints have been associated. Yeah, yeah. okay, thank you, James. So I've been reminded about ERC. Yeah, I was almost to forget, but not very critical at this level because I'll be coming to that also later. But always very important to conduct ERC. That's checking if your schematic has some sort of errors and stuff like those. So let us like now run ERC on this. Thank you, Maxwell. Thank you, Zaverio, you are smoky. Well, yeah, great. We need some fire extinguisher here. So let's do run. So we have we have some two errors to do with power and one to do with what? Pin three, pin three, pin one, yeah? We, they, are, they are telling us that pin one of the power input component, power not driven and pin what? Blah, 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 blah. So what, let me show you how we, we can fix those. Well, these are not like errors, but if someone wants to see that their design is clean here or something of the sort. So let me show you how we do that. So what happens is that these ones are power inputs. So what we can do is that we have a symbol in Kika that's called power flags. So what we can do, we can just include, we can just search it here, just do power flag. So it's just, it's just a technical thing, not like a design thing or something. So just have the power flag, flag, flag here, just then you connect it to your ground. So I'm just hovering there, hitting C and then doing a wire and then clicking left clicking here. They're also telling us something to do with that here because it's like this pin is not like triggered or something of the sort. We can say also that this is a power flag. Let's see if we can get rid of those errors. Let's do the same here. So this is not like any symbol, like it, it even doesn't have like a footprint or stuff or like that or anything. So it's just like something to do to fix with the there are so I mean it's Kika that's the thing. So we can do this. Let's run DRC. Oh, fantastic! Now we don't have any error. So and of course, you may you want to keep your design clean, also maybe and neat and something to do with that. But anyways, it's always good to check and make sure that probably at times you can grab and it can grab some errors that were really actual errors. So always good practice to check that you don't have any DRC, any ERC error. It's ERC it's for electrical rules check, yeah? So we close that. Thank you so much that, Stephen, for reminding us that. So we, we can generate net list again. Always, you can keep on generating your net list. And if you feel that you have performed any changes on your schematic. So we just, we just do a save there. So let's go back to our PCB. So what 